right now. Um, I am logged in as a just sample fake instructor, um, but everything I'm walking through is essentially what you are going to see. Um, I am probably going to say things like old course or previous course. And essentially, whenever I say that, I could be referring to you using and wanting to copy materials from an early course sandbox site that you got for fall 2020, or it could be a prior version of a course that you are hoping to reuse materials from. So I'll probably be using those interchangeably, um, but they essentially all mean just another site that you want to bring copy or you want to bring uh, content from into your new fall 2020 course site. So in Canvas, when you first log in onto your dashboard page, uh, you will see that there has been a slight update to how the dashboard page is displayed. It will show you now your published courses up here at the top, and then it'll separate out your unpublished courses at the bottom. So uh, you can see here, I have my fall 2020 sandbox site. Let me just make this a little bit bigger so it's not as teeny tiny. So I have my, sand, my early course sandbox site that I had, and then here's my official fall 2020 course site that was created for me. So I did put a bunch of content in my sandbox site, so I'm going to walk through the process of shifting my sandbox materials into my official site. So to start, I'm actually going to go into the brand new site that was created for me. And once inside of your site, you will see that you have all of your main uh, course navigation menu here. Uh, and at the lower portion of that menu is the settings button. So I want to pop over into the settings area of my brand new site. And once I'm in here, you'll see that there are some buttons on the right hand side of the page. And one of those buttons is the import course content button. And once you select that, you'll be brought to the import content page. Um, it is split in two. The upper portion is where you start your import process. And the lower portion will show any imports that you may have already triggered. And I did trigger one just so you could see what it looks like. Um, but when you first go to your site, you probably won't see anything under there. So when you're ready to import, uh, you're going to go to this content type drop down menu and you're first going to select copy a canvas course. And once you do that, you'll see a few more items appear for me to uh, choose from. You will see that you have the ability to select one of your courses. Um, please note that there is this little checkbox underneath here. Um, I recommend that you leave it checked. And basically what this is saying is that if you um, have a course that you taught in a prior semester and that course has already been completed, it's all done. If you want the old courses to appear in this drop down menu, just make sure that that's checked off and that way you'll be able to see any courses that you taught, you know, fall 2019, fall 2018, you'll see all your old courses in the drop down. So when you click on the drop down, it will lump your courses based on term. And you'll see here that I have a pretty good list of the and listed under the different terms are the courses that I am enrolled in with an instructor, guest instructor or TA role. If you are not enrolled in a course with one of those roles, that item will not appear in this list. So you do need to be enrolled in the course you want to copy from, you do need to have an instructor, guest instructor, or TA level role in that originator course. So from this list, I'm going to select my early course sandbox, which is right here. And then I have a couple of options on what I want to bring over. So the first option is to just bring absolutely everything that I've put in that course and I can just select all content, click on import, and it's gonna bring absolutely everything that I put in that sandbox. The other option, which is the option I'm gonna walk through, is the select specific content. And this option just allows you to pick and choose which pieces you're going to bring over. And because that has a couple of extra steps, I'm gonna walk through that one, that process. 
I will also mention that there is this ability to adjust your event and due dates. So if, for example, you're copying from your fall 2019 version of your course, you may want to shift the due dates uh, accordingly. So if previously it was due um, on September 1st in 2019, it may be due on September 5th in 2020. So you can do some adjustments by modifying what the first day of class is um, this year versus what it was last year. Um, and you can also do some substitutions. So if, for example, last, uh, last fall you taught on Mondays, but this semester you'll be teaching on Wednesdays, you can shift all Monday due dates over to Wednesday due dates. Now, I will admit that this process here I would never run through this date adjustment without going through all those changes with a fine tooth comb after it was imported. And to me, that just seems like a lot of extra work. So I'm gonna show you an alternative way of dealing with um, modifying due dates, especially on assignments and things. Um, and you can basically just, for this, you could select the remove dates and there'll be no due dates on your imported content and then you can adjust them later with what I'll show you. Or you could just leave this off and it will keep the old due dates on there and you can do adjustments um, but be able to see what the old dates were. Um, so I'm going to leave those settings as is here and then I will go ahead and click on import. Once I click on import you'll see under current jobs it now lists the job that I just began, but it does note that it's waiting for selection. And this is because I have chosen to pick and choose. If you had said you were bringing over all content, it would just automatically start the import process. But right now it's waiting for me because it needs to know which pieces I want to bring over. So to choose, I just click on this select content button and it will pop up this little menu where I can pick and choose what I want. Um, one thing I will mention really quickly here, you can see that I have a full list of items here. This is listing out what is in my sandbox site that I chose to copy. If I did not have any quizzes in my sandbox, then this quizzes button would not appear here. So this is specifically showing me only what materials exist in the course I'm copying from. Next to each one of these items is a little arrow that when you click on it, it will actually expand and show you what's contained within it. So within assignments, if I keep clicking and expanding, I can get down to the actual individual assignments that I have in here. And you can select individual items. You can select the uppermost folder here and it would and then include all of those or if you select the entire tool, it will just automatically select everything underneath. So you do have the ability to be very granular or you can pick everything. Um, in terms of assignments, um, one thing I will mention about the assignments that's a little bit unique is that the assignments page is also where you can set up your assignment groups and do group weighting. If you do want to maintain those groups and group weighting, you would want to select everything under assignments just to make sure that all those folders and those percentages were maintained. Um, so you'd want to make sure you select those. Um, also, um, one other thing I will also note here in terms of the assignments page, because of the way it works with the assignment weighting, the assignments section here will also include any uh, graded quizzes or graded discussions that you have as well. So those will also be li uh, listed in here. So you can see my class discussions are listed here. And that's because they are included as part of my waiting uh, for my grades. But you will notice that there is also a separate section for the discussion topics and it is listed there too. You by selecting it in one place, it's selecting it in the other as well. You don't have to manually pick both for any reason. Um, I will also mention that if you are using modules as a way of organizing your course, 
if you select to bring over a module, it will bring over that module as well as anything that you have put inside that module. So if you had an assignment under week one module, the module and that assignment would both come over by just selecting module here. So that will, that will include everything that is within the module. Um, and so basically you would just go through here and pick and choose what you want to bring over. And um, once you have selected everything that you are uh, wanting to bring over, and I'll just select a whole bunch of things here, um, and I'll say all my modules, then you can just click on the select content button and that's going to queue up and trigger the process and it will start that import process. Um, while that process is running, um, I will also add in a couple of little gotcha things to keep in mind. You can certainly import multiple times, so I can trigger another import. Um, but if you were to import, so I just imported my sandbox. If I now take that content and I make an edit while I'm inside of my official fall course, and then I come back here and I re-import those same files, the import is going to overwrite anything that you've done. So if you're making any edits in your official course, you may not want to re-import things that, uh, that you've been working on. So definitely try not to do that. Um, another thing to keep in mind uh, is that if you are putting static links to parts of your course, um, like for instance, maybe you created an item that's in your global nav bar that points to a specific reading in your files area. That static link will not be updated unless you have used the content selector panel to create that link. So some of your links may break simply because they're pointing to the old course. Um, Kimberly, I think your audio may have paused. And when you click on that, it's going to look through your course. So I will click on start. It's going to look through my course to see if there's anything that is pointing to an old course site, um, to see if there's any links that are not working anymore. So this link validator tool is going to provide some good information for you. And really, so um, can you start back from uh, how to restore those broken links? Because your audio cut out for a little bit. Sure. Thanks. Sure. So in terms of the finding the link validator tool, uh, you go into settings. And then over on the right hand side, is a button for validate links in content. And then once you're here, you would click on start and it will now check through your course to find if there are any links that are pointing to an old course site or any links that are just broken. Um, once that process is done, it will provide you a list of things that may need to be addressed. And then you can just click on that item and it will take you over, it, it will show you where to go. Sorry, click on that. And it will take you to where that link is broken so that you can manage it and fix it. So the link validator tool will be really helpful just to make sure that you have everything set up correctly and that students don't accidentally get pointed to a course that they're not enrolled in. Um, in terms of fixing the links, uh, all you would need to do is then edit. So this happens to be a page. So I would just click on edit. And then I could just highlight this and change this link to be whatever it needs to be. So if it happened to be a link to a file that was in the files area, then I could put the appropriate link in here. Um, and that's really just finding out what your new link URL is and putting it in here. Um, and you can just copy and paste that in there and then hit save and it would fix it. So for example, um, I might paste in, let me just 
I'll just grab like copy link location. And then I could just backspace, put the appropriate link in there, and then save it. And then that will adjust it. Um, that will be, it'll be dependent upon what exactly you're linking to and how you're linking to make that modification. But um, in general, that's going to be how you handle those kind of things. Um, so one other thing I do want to point out as a interesting gotcha for those of you who like to copy over your announcements from an older course. When you bring over announcements uh, from an old course site, uh, first thing to note is that it will not resolve who posted it, so it will not have a name next to it as to who posted it. Um, the second thing is, is that once it is imported, because you posted it maybe in, let's say that I copied it from my fall 2019 course, when I posted it in fall 2019, I made it available and Kimberly, your mic's cutting out again. Date on this one, I should have put one in there, but essentially this announcement is visible to students. So if there was a student in this course, they would see this announcement. So when you copy them over, it's going to be visible to students immediately because it's in there. If you don't want students to see this, you would either need to delete this announcement or you would have to put a delay posting date that's well in the future. Or if you are reusing the same one, you would put it on the date you want it to release. Um, but you would wanna put it well into the future so that students don't see it right now. Um, I find that to be a bit of a pain in the butt, um, but I, I will also say that even in changing this to be a future date, on September 5th, it's probably not going to send out that notification because this is an imported entry that doesn't have a name of who actually posted it on it. So my recommendation, if you are using announcements, I wouldn't copy them over like this. Um, you would basically want to create a new announcement and you could certainly copy and paste the content, but reusing announcements that you've imported are not really highly recommended. Um, so um, once you have dealt with all those little issues, um, there are a couple other things that was alluded to in the beginning in terms of things like external apps that are not going to come over either. Um, and I will talk a little bit about a couple of those in a minute. Um, but whenever your process is done, it's always a good idea to just kind of check through and see what has come through and what hasn't come through, just to ensure that you have what you need for your students. Um, I do want to go over the um, changing the due dates for assignments. Um, because I mentioned during my import process how I don't like dealing with that shifting of dates. So in the assignments tool, when I go over there, I will see all of my imported assignments, which all look great. And they all are within their group, um, assignment groups, because I did bring over everything. When I want to modify all of these due dates, I can actually use a tool to kind of bulk edit these. And what you need to do is make sure you're on the main assignments page where you see the full list of assignments. And then in the very uppermost portion on the right hand side, there's a three dot button next to that big blue plus assignment button. And when you click on the three dots, you do have this edit assignment dates feature. And when you click on that, it will now list out all the assignments in your course and their current due dates available from and available until dates. Um, keep in mind, again, that um, due date is when you want students to submit by and the available from and available until dates are actually the dates between which the student can submit. So um, 
so in here available from is when the students can start and available until is the cutoff when they no longer can submit. You can just go through in here and modify these individually by clicking on the little calendar icon, picking a new date, and it will adjust that. It will warn you if you're picking dates that are outside of the, uh, so like the until date, you don't want to cut them off before it's due. So it will give you this little reminder to let you know that you probably need to adjust that date as well. So it will provide this information here and you can make these adjustments like this. Um, and then you can click on save. Could select several of these items and then click batch edit. And with the batch edit feature, you can do a shift of dates. So you could shift it by, you know, three days or however many dates you want or how many days you want. Or you could just select to just remove the, the dates and you can pick and choose if it's going to be the due dates and or the availability dates. So you do have some batch editing options in there as well if you wanted. So that in my mind is the easier way of managing because that way you can actually see how the dates are fluctuating and it's a little bit easier to see what's going on for those. <laughs>